Matthew Greenwood, your host of Mac Panel Test Connect, where not only do we share with you ways to bridge your automated test equipment to your device under test, but also bring you industry partners that will help you dominate your testing application. Today, um, I want to share a special story with you guys about a time that I bought a car. Um, so this car was, was basically my dream car, right? Um, something I always wanted. Well, one time, this is about six or seven years ago, I got a call from the dealership owner and said, hey, we're running a special on these sports cars. Okay, and this was like the dream car. I always wanted one when I was young. Um, it was a, a six speed, had a V8 in it. I mean, all American muscle. Me, the sales guy convinced me, hey, you need to buy this thing. It's cheap. Uh, it's, you know, it's your dream car. Go ahead and get in it. And so what did I do? I bought it. I was really happy. Three months goes by and then it set in the buyer's remorse and the buyer's remorse didn't come from buying the car specifically, but it came from all of the stuff that you don't talk about as far as the cost of that car. Right. Um, and this was a convertible. So part of that was like conditioning the convertible top and you had to do that monthly. Uh, the other part of that was, Hey, it was a V8. It didn't get, you know, 30, 40 miles to the gallon. It got all of 14, 15. Um, so anyway, long story short, I took that car, I took it back and I got something that was more cost effective, a little bit more pricey. But long term, it saved uh, me a bit of money. So today, really, what I want to talk about is I want to talk about price versus cost, um, specifically in the ATE uh, industry or the automated test equipment industry. Um, in order to do that, I've actually brought in a special guest, Clint Biggs with Testeract. Uh, thank you for taking the time to speak with us and, and join us for this podcast. Um, Absolutely. So you heard my intro. What do you have any take on? Uh, price versus cost and it, it is the, the the challenge that I, I think most folks happen to have it but man your uh, your car story is, is is spot on and I'll tell you uh, as I date myself a little bit here for me growing up um, I can tell you exactly what that car was because I, I had that dream like like all the kids in my neighborhood did but uh, right. for me that car was a, a Lamborghini Countach what is Countach and what does that stand for you know, I'm, I'm not going to swear to it, but as I understood it as a young man, that was Italian for holy cow, because uh, that was a fast oh, car. That's, you know? that's funny. <laughs> and um, uh, I, I love that car. Sticker price on it was was roughly $100,000. And and mm. growing up, all I could think about was how many lawns I needed to mow or or chores I needed to do in order to save enough money. Never once realized was, that that $100,000 car would have probably been a million dollar proposition by the time. You know, wow. yeah, right. By the time everything's done and everything's added up and stuff, yeah. Well, Clint, yeah, thank yeah, you yeah. so much, man. I appreciate you sharing that. Listen, uh, we're gonna we're gonna change things up a little bit today. Uh, we actually invited Jason. He's your he's your marketing director. Is that correct at yep. Testerac? Yep. Um, That's right. So we find we've invited him to actually do the questioning today, as I'll be representing that panel uh, in this podcast. So let me go ahead and bring him in. How hey. you doing, bud? Doing well. Yeah, thank you uh, so much for for volunteering to uh, <laughs> to do the the interviewing uh, for this podcast. We really appreciate it, um, guys. If, so, really quick before we get into the price versus cost, can y'all just tell me a little bit, uh, Clint? We can start with you. Just tell us a little bit about what you're uh, doing with Testerac. Hey, absolutely. Um, I my, my role is I, I lead the sales and marketing effort here with Testerac. We are a systems integration. Um, and tools provider for the automated test world at large. So, Jason, I've also been at Testract. I've been at Testract for a little over a year, but I've been in the test and measurement industry for twenty plus years. Uh, and and uh, I love it. I know how important it is to get good tests done. So that'd be the software or hardware. I know how hard that is too. So uh, that's what we we try to help people figure out their test systems. Thank you all again for joining us. Jason, I'm going to hand it over to you if you want to kind of take over and, and lead the discussion. Sure. First question I think would be for Clint. Um, tell us about some of the current trends and challenges that you're seeing in the AT industry, uh, particularly in relation to cost and price. Great, great, great question. When you look at the trends that have been going on uh, in, in the test industry, you know, the first thing I'm going to say, it's, it's, it's the never ending cycle. And that's simply that the test is typically considered a necessary evil. 
Uh, there's budgets that are set aside. There's expectations that go with it, but but forever it's it's downward pressure. Um, and this idea of doing more with less is not necessarily a new idea, but it's it's the long trend, if, if you will. With that, though, are you know some more current things. In an effort to to minimize that that time, to minimize that that cost, you're starting to see uh, a lot more with simulation and the concept of trying to simulate your way out of test. Things like digital twinning, uh, where, where you create a digital copy of, of the real world system that that, that you have. Uh, all in an effort to get the insight to, to shorten down that test time. Uh, when we talk about, because uh, Matthew introduces a, a great kind of price versus cost. When we're talking about price, that's the amount of money expected, required, or given in payment for something. And the cost, from what, I, from what I'm gathering in this discussion, is really the effort, loss, or sacrifice necessary to, to achieve or obtain something. So that, that price and that cost is a little different. Now. Clint, what are what are some of the predictable prices that uh, that really defines an ATE build? Yeah, when you look at the the components of of, of a test system, uh, right off the bat, you're going to be looking at what I would call the, the 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 tooling side of it, and that's broken down primarily between hardware. A um, couple of different ways we can look at that one, and and then the software side. Um, from the hardware side, you've got what I would say are, are, are more of your, your knowns. It, it's not quite static, but, but when you look at the cost of instrumentation, uh, that, that's fairly well defined. Um, there's, there's differences in performance and, and specifications for a given instrument, but from a larger perspective, a, a DMM is a DMM is a DMM. A scope is a scope is a scope. And, and, and you have these relative ranges that you can plan for. And so many times, I, I think when when end users are approaching their test situation, they're looking at it from, from that perspective. Now, uh, on the other side of the hardware side, it is not simply taking the measurement, but but getting to that. It, it, it's the connectivity, it's it's uh, the interconnects, it's it's all the issues that go along with that, and that is that is not necessarily a commodity. Much more involved, much like on the software side, you've got COTS software that you could use. There's there's test and measurement focus tools like LabVIEW or, or like TestStand, but but really the magic behind that is all the effort that, that you as a as an end user engineer need to put forth to to make the tool do what it what it is that you need. So you, you spoke about the, 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 the hardware side, right? And yeah. um, how you know basically a DMM is just that, right? An oscilloscope is just that, right? So you have these tools that like you said aren't necessarily fixed but they are just what they are. Um, right. And then you, you actually brought up a really good point um, when it comes to uh, interconnect, right? The, the hardware that basically bridges that gap between the automated test okay. equipment and the DUT. Um, some of that stuff is, you know, is not fixed and it's all very application specific, right? And right. so that application can change. And because that application has changed, the environment can also change. Um, you know, one, one of those situations could be a, a, a thermal chamber. That's going to change how you're connecting from test to dut. You could, uh, there, there could be some, some environmental issues that, that cause a little bit more, maybe uh, signal noise. Um, and so that has to be taken a, you know, into consideration. Um, so yes, we're looking at possibly, you know, the upfront price of a connection uh, between the ATE and the, and, and the device under test, but also looking at the kind of the, the holistic piece of this, which is, you know, all of that environmental uh, stuff that's involved in connecting, um, as well as all of the other application specific stuff that could affect not just your price, but also the long-term cost. That is 100% right. And and, you know, just another distinction here as well, when we talk about test, it, 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 it's a pretty broad brush group because, you know, there's there's tests on the front side that may be more uh, characterization based or, or validation based. And, and and maybe you do get away with that bench top. But by the time you, you ramp that up and, and you're looking at, at mass production, mm -hmm. yeah, that, that's a completely different world. And so once again, measurement device may be the same where you measure it, when you measure it, the, 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 the environmentals that go with that change everything, uh, make it a much That's more right. difficult aspect for sure.
Yeah. yeah. When you don't want to, you don't want to do the equivalent of painting yourself in a corner. And you want to, you want to have something that when it does change, when, when, when your things change, because you're also going to ha- deal with, with things not being perfect at the start. So when you have new, new options, new changes, you need to be prepared to deal with those. So Matthew, can you, can you explain some more detail cost related items that should be considered when determining the interconnect approach? Absolutely. Um, so, you know, let's, let's go into a couple of those, right? Maintainability, uh, obsolescence issues, uh, modularity, uh, application specific. Um, you can also look at, um, you know, uh, uh, how robust the, uh, the, the connection method needs to be. Um, but we'll, we'll break each one of those down really quickly. Let's, let's talk about maintenance. There, there's potentially a lot that goes into maintaining uh, number one, your ATE, uh, your, your your automated test um, system, but also your uh, connectivity method. You need to factor that in when you're considering the total cost. Uh, Mac Panel is known for um, creating modular and high performance uh, interconnect by utilizing PCBs in replacement of uh, wires or cables. Right, wires and cables are known to be more high maintenance. Okay. Um, Now they might be cheaper up front, so that price is a little lower, but long term, um, when the application uh, dictates that, you know, you need uh, something that's more reliable and uh, requires less maintenance, uh, PCB would be the way to go. Now a little bit more pricey up front, but cost wise, it's very effective in bringing your total cost of ownership down. You talked about um, you know, having something that you could easily change up to, based on the, the DUT. Um, I'm actually going to toss this back over to Clint. Clint, you brought up some very interesting points when we have uh, spoken earlier. Um, can you share a little bit about your uh, your software, the Test Rack, and then, and then I'll speak a little bit more about modularity on our end. Yeah, a- a- absolutely. So um, just, again, from, from the perspective of maybe price versus cost, with the exception of the most simple type of measurements that you may want to make, if, if you are truly in the moment and you just need to go check the resistance of something or, or check the, the, the voltage, you, you know, that's going to be one thing. But, but at the point that you need to do any level of, of repeatability, any sort of automation, any sort of logging, those types of things, um, um, that's when from a, from a software perspective, you really move beyond just the, the cost or even the open source type tooling that's out there. So pick a language, uh, your, your favorite language, C, Python, Labby, whatever the case may, may be. Um, very first thing you're going to wind up looking at are, are what libraries are going to be there to enable uh, the communication. Regardless of what's there, fundamentally, the application that you have is going to be unique to your need, unique to your DUT, your device and your test. And so as you expand that out from an automation perspective, uh, there's a lot of components um, that, that you should consider and, and you ultimately put into that. Now, l- let me put a pin in that for just half a moment. As engineers, uh, one of the most common things I, I see uh, on industry is I can build that myself. And it doesn't matter if it's hard or it doesn't matter if it's software. We, you know, we, we think we can do all of these things ourselves. And there's certainly nothing wrong with that. But, um, but you definitely need to be able to bring the right expertise and the right tools to bear in order to get what you want. And, and to be honest, to, to learn from, from, you know, past experience as you're bringing it in. So bringing that forward to, to test track, you know, we have built hundreds, thousands of, of test systems that are out there, uh, automated test systems. You learn a lot of lessons along the way. And, and what you find is that there are some common software components that go into there as well. So with a mind on promoting some of the very same issues you brought up, maintainability, um, expandability, extensibility of, of, of your code as your signals change and so forth. Um, you need to make sure that that same thing exists there. So from a test track perspective, we've rolled out a framework that captures many of these things. And our approach is, is to enable the engineer to really focus on what they need to focus on, which are the specifics of, of the measurements to the DUT itself. They shouldn't have to worry about redoing the logger redoing the the communication scheme out out there 
yesterday you were showing a uh, pictograph of what this looks like in a real world, I guess, scenario. Um, and that's oh, something yeah. absolutely that we can pop up uh, on this screen for uh, our listeners, our viewers. Um, but one of the things I recognized is that this, this framework that you guys have built, the software framework that you guys have built in a tangible setting, right? That yeah. looks, it yeah. looked so familiar or was so familiar to me because, you know, that scout is kind of that same thing, but in an in interconnect uh, solution. Okay. I mean, yeah. it's, it's basically, we have uh, these, these uh, PCV based interconnect uh, solutions that are, are basically COTS that, uh, that are customizable to some extent that, uh, that connect an instrument out to the interface. Um, right. and so the similarities there were, were, are, 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 are so much, you know? Um, and so that's, that's one thing that I kind of wanted to say was that, um, you know, when we're looking at price and cost, uh, price is that kind of initial upfront, okay, I'm going to purchase this interconnect, right? Or I'm going to, I'm going right. to invest into the, uh, the software or whatever that is. And then cost is, well, what is it going to take to maintain it? Right. And then That's in right. the future, are we going to have to do it again? And when we do it again for another DUT, are we going to have to build a whole new test system just for this new DUT? Or, you know, can we take this test system and move it forward? That's exactly right. That you know, the price you pay is is a quantifiable number. Typically, the sum of the components that you're putting in. Uh, the, the cost is going to be uh, not quite intangible, but but certainly a, a much broader uh, inclusion of not just those components, but the level of effort and the energy that it's going to take. You know, from a resourcing perspective, a scope perspective. You know, typical you know project components that are going there. But, but here's the thing, and this is where we're going to link. Cost does not have to be an unknown. And if you approach it with the right tools, understanding what your challenges are going in, you, you reduce your cost to a repeatable price. And, and that's really the magic behind things like Scout and, and of course, the Testerac software framework. So if I can, you know, when kind of going back to that trends discussion and, and doing more with less, what I find more and more of now is a given test engineer is required not just to test, you know, this widget that's coming down the line, but they're responsible for a family of widgets, several things. And, and they are literally, literally spinning, you know, multiple plates at any given time, what's going on and, and never having just the moment to step back and, and, and look at this, you know, and as, as the lumberjack says, you know, you got to stop and, and sharpen the saw from time to time uh, to improve the, the output that you're ultimately going to have. And so when I look at this, the challenges that, that ultimately I, I see are, are not in the quality of measurement, even though technology is pushing more and more high speed and, and, and complex duts, you know, out that, that they need to be tested. It, it's not in the measurement. It's in things like lack of standardization. The fact that we're run, trying to recreate a, a tester every time it's, it's the lack of experience of the people. You know, Matt, you and I had a little bit of a brief discussion on this uh, the other day. None of us went to school to be test engineers. In fact, that, that doesn't exist. You, you don't pick your favorite college. You're, you're not going to be a, a, a bachelor or master test engineer. You're an electrical right. engineer, mechanical, a computer engineer, something like that. And it's only after accepting a job in this space that you wind up learning and so it's it's a certain amount of tribal knowledge and domain knowledge that goes around which is part of why i think some of these challenges have, have not been more firmly um uh, addressed and and why i feel like what mac panel is offering particularly with scout and what we're offering on the software side is so so critical um it's enabling these engineers to put out standards um reduce their overall test time, reduce cost, but, but, but do so much more uh, and set themselves up for success. Yeah, and like, what I like about that is that you can let all of the people that have had all of the years of experience, all that experience is plugged into, say, Scout or that automated test framework yeah. from Abstract. 
all that is in there. And so that, that your starting point makes your starting point much, much better, uh, mm-hmm. I think. And it makes also all of the maintenance down the road. I mean, that's that's hard to even put a put a price tag on how much you're actually saving with all the maintenance that you're not having to do uh, because you have chosen this modular approach that could be adjusted however it needs to be. When I look, and, and I've been doing this for 31 years, right? When I look at the number of jobs that we go in and I contrast or I, I count the number of brand new builds that are coming from a new design um, for something brand new versus, hey, we've been doing it this way for a while, but this system is now obsolete. You know, the the, the PC system that we use was using Windows XP or, or something or this equipment, this management equipment is no longer available. I, you know, it the the obsoleted systems far outweigh the, the number of, of new designs that's out there. So uh, exactly to, to, to your point, they're, they're Jason, they're putting these things out there and they're and they're not building them to to live that life. And and again, price versus cost, you got to put your your expected life expectancy out there and build it with, with that in mind. And otherwise, you're going to have a dead system and um and and really increase your cost on the backside all right jason uh thank you so much for uh hosting (laughs) you did a fabulous job clint thank you so much for joining us and uh and and bringing your insight and information to this topic i think that's uh very crucial for most uh really all test engineers right how to how to do more right with less uh, is very, very, very important to consider, um, which is why looking at number one, partnering with the correct uh, vendor, the correct partner, and, and then also number two, making sure that you're choosing um, the correct hardware and software, not just for that short term, um, you know, price expenditure, but also that long term, what is this going to cost us down the road? And then how is it going to perform? Clint, is there a, a, uh, a place that they can go to learn a little bit more about Testeract? Absolutely. Our, you know, our, our main website, testeract.com, is, is a fantastic landing uh, point for that. But um, it really as a function of, of the, the watchers on, the, on this thread looking at that, uh, we're very happy to offer you. A, there, there's a free ebook that, that specifically addresses uh, concepts uh, around um, building automated testers and and some of the considerations that, that you'll wind up having. Uh, again, Jason, Clint, thank you guys so much. This is going to wrap up uh, this episode of Mac Panel Test Connect. Thank you all so much.